I've seen a bunch of videos popping up on YouTube that talk about ranking on the first page of Google in a few hours. So I thought if these people can do it, maybe I can too. And so here's the good news. It works. I can rank pages in hours. The funny thing is that it's actually the easy part, but there's a lot more to the story. Let's talk about how you get a blog post to rank on the first page of Google in just a few hours. What's the secret formula? So let me save you the suspense. There is no secret formula. If you have the ability to find a low competition long tail keyword and you aren't an absolutely brand new domain, you should be able to do this. Because the bottom line is this, if you can find low competition long tail keywords that other people aren't writing about, or if you can find you know, new domains that have limited domain authority, you can get something to rank and rank quickly. And by the way, I use Low Fruits to find these keywords, and I have a link to Low Fruits and a discount code in the description for this video. Of course, you'll need to have written a well-optimized article using basic SEO principles for this to work. You know, things like getting the keyword in your slug, putting the keywords in your title, make sure and incorporate keywords into the introduction and body of the blog post. Obviously, if you have an SEO optimization tool, use it. If you don't have one, get one. I strongly suggest Neuron Writer. I do have a bunch of videos on Neuron Writer if you want to find out more about that tool. So once you publish your post, you know, you just jump out to Google Search Console and manually submit the URL for indexing. So in my experience, you know, even newish domains can get a page to rank within hours. Now, if you are a brand new domain, meaning you just purchased the domain and got it running, this probably is not going to work. But it definitely works for a domain that I have that's less than six months old and has about 25 blog posts. So that's awesome news for newer bloggers. It looks like you can rank pretty quickly if you have a long tail keyword with low competition. So I've established ranking on the first page of Google in hours works, but there's a side to this that nobody wants to talk about in their videos. Just because you show up on page one in Google for a search term doesn't mean you'll be there forever. And that's what people don't talk about in their YouTube videos. It's not that showing up on page one of Google in hours isn't a good thing, but will you be there a couple of weeks from now? You know, and I hate to say this, but there's a good chance you won't be there unless you're seeing click-throughs to that blog post. So think about it this way. You own a jewelry store. You get hundreds of people walking past your front window looking at diamond rings. So of course you put your top selling rings in the window, but now you get a brand new ring in stock. You want to see if people like it. So you put it in the front window. Now, if that ring sells, you keep it there. If it doesn't, you replace it with another. And Google does the same thing with blog posts. Google is continually experimenting. And the one thing they love to do is promote new content. And they are willing to even promote your newish domain because you know maybe your content is better than the older, more established domains. So Google does you a solid, they put you on page one. But if nobody ever clicks on your post, you're going to slowly slip in the rankings because it's a signal to Google that people aren't interested in your bright, shiny new blog post. And it's happened to me multiple times. Some of my posts stick on page one, some slip back to page two or three or five. So let's talk about a few realities. When a user does a Google search, they'll see two things. They're going to see your meta title and they'll either see your meta description or a chunk of your blog post content. So in my experience, Google rarely shows the meta description. So the only thing you really have complete control over is the page title. This means your title is really the only thing that differentiates your post from another post for the same keyword. So what I've done is I found a few examples in Google. I want to show you what I'm talking about, and then we can talk through how you might be able to get people to click through. I did a search, are gravel bikes good for commuting? I do a lot of different videos and I always talk about biking. So I thought I'd start off with this one. Now, if we take a look here, are gravel bikes good for commuting? 
you know, that's our keyword. The exact match is our gravel bikes good for commuting. And as we scroll down through here, right away we see right here, our gravel bikes good for commuting. We see another post, our gravel bikes good for commuting. We go a little bit further down, our gravel bikes good for commuting. So it's something that people are writing blog posts for. But how do you differentiate your title from the other titles that you see here and get people to click through? Because that's really what I'm talking about is you may get on page one, but will you stay there? Here's another great example, hybrid versus electric cars, right? So let's take a look at this right away. Hybrid versus electric cars, what's the difference? Hybrid versus electric cars, why hybrids make more sense. We see another one, hybrids versus electric cars. And as we go down, we don't see it posted again, but you can see what I'm talking about. Many times you're going to see the title and the title always remains the same. So whatever title you come up with for your blog post, it's gonna stay. My experience has been Google rarely shows the meta description that you put together for your blog post. It typically takes a section of your blog post and inserts it here. And so that's, that's all people see. And how do you get people to click through? Here's another one, pros and cons of social media. First blog post, pros and cons of social media. Social media, pros and cons. Pros and cons of using social media, right? So you're gonna experience this with many blog posts where on the first page you have all these titles that look relatively the same. So the way you can work around this and hopefully get people to click through to your particular blog post, which is going to make a difference in how long you stay on the page, is I went into perplexity and for that search for hybrid versus electric cars, I just simply said this, can you give me 10 intriguing, interesting, clickbait style meta titles for the blog post, hybrid versus electric cars? We'll click enter. And now it's given some interesting titles that hopefully will urge people to click through compared to the more mundane, common titles. So hybrid versus electric cars, the showdown you didn't know you needed. Are hybrids the future? Discover why they might outshine electric cars. Electric cars versus hybrids, which one will rule the road in 2024? The shocking truth about hybrid and electric cars, what car buyers must know. Now, at first glance, I wouldn't use this, the shocking truth about hybrids and electric cars, but I would test it and I would go with it, and I would go with some of the more clickbait type titles to see if that's going to get people to click through. Because the more click throughs you get, and if you go to Google Search Console for this particular article that you've written on hybrid versus electric cars, and you see no click throughs, because basically what's going to happen is the Google Search Console will show you the number of impressions that the article has, let's say it shows 150 impressions, but zero click-throughs, not a good sign. So the minute you see that, that's when I would go through and I would rewrite the title. I think Google is pretty smart about being able to make sure that they get this article in front of people. So do you have to use the exact match of your long tail keyword in the article title? I don't think you necessarily do. You can start off that way, but if you're not getting any click-throughs, then you definitely want to change the title up and maybe use a tool like Perplexity with the same kind of prompt that I just put here. Can you give me 10 intriguing, interesting clickbait style meta titles for the blog post topic hybrids versus electric cars? Obviously, you're going to put your own blog post topic in there and then take these and start experimenting because if you get to page one, but you go for a couple weeks and there are no click-throughs, then you do, you do need to consider doing something with the title. Because if you don't, you're definitely going to slip down in the rankings. So let's say you start off and you're the third search result in the page. What's going to happen is if you get no click-throughs in a few days, you'll probably drop to number five or number seven. 
then number nine, and then the next thing you know, you're on page two or three or five, right? That's just going to happen. So the only thing you really have control over is the title itself. Obviously, you want a well-written, well-researched blog post, so when people click through, they stick around. I don't know if Google's able to tell the time on page. I'm not sure how they can. Unless you're using Google Analytics, there might be a way that Google Search Console and Google Analytics work together. If you're using another analytics tool beyond Google Analytics, then there's probably not much of a chance that Google knows what your time on page metrics are like or what your bounce rate is like. Yes, you can get on page one. You can do it with a low competition, long tail keyword. You can do it even if you're a newish domain, but the key is staying there and the key to staying there is click-throughs. So it's great that you're there, but you've really got to watch that Google Search Console and look at the number of click-throughs versus the number of impressions. And if you go for a week or two weeks with zero click-throughs, you've got to go in and do something like I'm just showing you here with the title and getting that uh, fixed up so you can have a more intriguing title, a more interesting title, and yes, you know, even a more clickbait type title. Because just like on YouTube where thumbnails matter, you know, half the time you don't even think about looking at a video unless it has an interesting thumbnail. Well, think about the thumbnail like a title. You want to have it intriguing, it needs to be interesting. And as long as the search intent is still there in the title, it's okay for it to be clickbait as well. So make sure and sign up for my free newsletter. There's a link in the video description. I've got my discount codes there for software as well. So until next time, take care.